Okay, the one question I get from a lot of people Pops. is, what is digipeding? Can you explain digipeding? Sure thing, Don. I'm Lynn, KJ4ERJ, or Kilo Juliet 4, Echoes of Romeo and Juliet. Um, I'm the author of APRS IS32, the APRS client that everyone uses on Windows, or a lot of people use on Windows. And I'm also a, one of the founding members of the new APRS Foundation. Uh, the APRS Foundation, we're, we formed a nonprofit to pick up the reins where Bob left off. He's a silent key. So if you want to know more information about that, check the APRS SIG mailing list or APRSFoundation.org. There'll be more information on that coming out soon. Okay, all right. Now, digipeding is complicated, at least, at least for the guys that don't know it. So I've asked you to, because it is complicated, I've asked you to write some, some notes and just give us a quick demonstration. So take it away, Lynn. Sure thing. Uh, digipeding, you're all familiar with APRS paths, the, temp, the wide 1-1, one, one, wide 2-1, or wide 1-1, one, one, wide 2-2. Two, two. Those are the outbound paths. They activate digipeters out there for you. D75 includes digipeting, like the D72 did before it. What does that do for the D75 operator? Absolutely nothing. But what it does do is it extends the APRS digipeter network in a way that can be dynamically used by other APRS users in a, in a pinch, in a bind. So the D75 has standard digipeter settings, just like the, the venerable KPC3. It does digipeting on my call, it does UI Digi, it does UI Flood, and UI Trace. UI Trace is the one we're really gonna focus on today because that is the standard method of digipeting in the APRS national network. Okay, so, so basically, if you just turn your d the default settings on the 75, if you just turn that on to DigiPete, you're not really going to notice anything. That's correct, Don. Uh, you're not going to notice anything going on, but if somebody needs to use you as a DigiPeter, you'll be there ready to go. Okay, and how does that, how do, how do you do that? Oh, how do you actually use the temp network? Right. That requires you to set your outbound path on whatever APRS radio you're using, set your outbound path to a temp 1-1, temp 2-1, or whatever. So you just use temp instead of wide. So we have the wide digipeter network and we have the temp digipeter network, which is kind of an ad hoc network. Um, Bob published a URL on that. I'll make sure you get it to put in the comments below or an overlay um, that describes what it's for. His recommendation is that you don't actually enable the temp digipeting on HTs, the D72 or the D75, unless you have it strategically placed. Because HTs, quite honestly, at five watts, aren't really gonna do a whole lot for you. Unlike the D710, which comes from the factory with this temp digipeating enabled. So it's really cool. You just substitute temp instead of wide in your outbound path and you'll use this ad hoc network. So, th so this would be something like a, like a special events or search and rescue where you guys wanna all kind of send the packet up and down the uh, search the search grid or or the uh, bike trail or or the uh, racetrack or something like that absolutely um, i've used it when i've gone biking i set my mobile up as a temp digipeter in my my van and then i go biking with my ht enabling the temp so it'll bounce through my van to get out to the bigger infrastructure um, like i said d710 ship with this ui trace enabled if you want to enable it on the d75 you just go into the UI Trace Digipeter and turn it on. That's menu I-587 is all you need to do to turn it on if you've got a nice strategically placed HT. Okay, I have a demo here. I've got a D75 configured with the temp digipeting enabled and the MyCall digipeting enabled. And I've got a D72 here that's set up to use the D75 as its digipeter. So what I'm gonna do is just force a beacon here on the D75 and we should see, we're, we're here at the Orlando Hamcation, so there's a lot of APRS traffic. My position via KJ4ERJ5. So the D72 beaconed, requesting the D75 for digipede assistance. The D75 digipeded, and the D72 acknowledged that receipt. For the casual user, there you go. I would say don't worry about your D75 digipeter functions. Keep it set to the factory default settings. You don't need to enable that temp. If you are involved in an event, or if you're an expert APRS user that understands digipeding, you'll know immediately how to na navigate through the dedicated digipeter menu on yep. the D75. But what we do want to encourage you, 
if, if you're a soft user, is do get involved in APRS for events, and then that way you can learn how to do it. Absolutely. Get involved. Get out there for the bike events, the hiking events, the running events. Get your APRS in there so Net Control knows where you are in the course and doesn't have to call and ask who's closest to this location. They glance and they know exactly where their assets are. Okay, just a few more questions because uh, you're, you're, you're my go-to guy for uh, APRS. Certainly. Tell me what a hop is. Okay, a hop, um, a hop is a digipeter repeat. So when you put a wide one one in your path, you're asking for one hop from a low level or a high level digipeter. When you put a wide two one in your path, you're asking for a hop only from the high altitude digipeters. Traditional path, wide one one, wide two one, you're getting two hops. One from a low or a high, and another one from a high digipeat. So your packet's actually gonna go out three times over those two hops. Right, and, and digipeters, yeah, they're in handy talkies, they're in mobile radios, but a digipeter is also in fixed locations like mountains and high areas, and that's where you get the hop twos. Twos The from. hop ones and twos are up on the mountaintops, Hop one digipeters, or the wide one one digipeters, are typically home installations or down in valleys just to get a boost from the local network out into the national infrastructure. Okay, the other question I always get is proportional path, turning it on and off, or um, there's another one. In, there's another one in there. Proportional path and the decay. De decay. Algorithm. Okay, <laughs> do the purport. Tell us the proportional path. Okay, proportional path. If you set your path up as wide one one wide two one, it's going to beacon the first time with no path. Then it's going to use a wide one one. Then it's going to do no path. Then it's going to do wide one one wide two one. Then it's going to do no path. Then it's going to do wide. You get the idea. It lets you beacon locally with no hops, beacon a little bit further local with one hop, and then beacon back to no hops, and then beacon out to the two hops. So it contains what you're doing to the network. If you're tooling around town, that's perfect. If you're cruising out on the highway, I would turn off proportional pathing because everywhere you go is gonna be a new location. Okay, now for me, when I'm mobile, I use smart beaconing, and, that, and that, that to me, when I'm traveling, I use smart beaconing, I use the default settings, because uh, that works for me. Yes. But, uh, but then decay algorithm is? Uh, the, the decay algorithm will, as I understand it, I'm not real familiar with that one, will, will slow down your beacons if, if the, you're not moving. That's correct. So you, when you first park, you might get a 10 minute beacon and then a 20 minute beacon. And I think it maxes out to 30 minutes. Okay, when, all right, when all right, all right. So, so Bob, he's just, he, he put that in there to save the, save the network, so to speak. Right, for, okay. the, for mobile operators that are then parked. Okay, and then uh, one more question. Sure. Some people get the idea that you can message Oh, APRS messaging is the bee's knees. Okay. Um, there's a, a, a group called APRS Thursdays that use AN server. You can look it up. Just go to Facebook and search for HOTG, Hams on the Gram, or APRS Thursday. It uses a worldwide APRS messaging network, and they're typically getting anywhere from three, I think they maxed out at 500 participants in a UTC 24 hour Thursday window. So it's it's practical. You can work all states in one in one day. Yes, as a matter of fact, with uh, HOTG, they have their own APRS messaging worked all states award. So you can get the fifty states right now. They're begging for people in Alaska. So if any of you viewers are in Alaska, join in on APRS Thursday and answer people's CQs to HOTG and get, help them get their worked all states. And and folks, if you do get this video, if you want to send a message, just send a message just for fun. How do they send a message to you on APRS? Now, you can send a message to KJ4ERJ. That's my internet-based APRS station. It's on nearly 24-7. If you want to catch me mobile, look for KJ4ERJ-12. And that is my mobile APRS station. You'll find it leapfrogging with various other RF-based APRS stations. Sometimes it's a mobile eye gate using Kenwood's radios and the Bluetooth link. Or sometimes it's just my phone beaconing. But you can catch me on KJ4ERJ at my desk or KJ4ERJ-12 when I'm mobile. Okay, Lynn, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the show. Thanks, Don. Have a great day. Oh.